How are you feeling? I'm fine. Listen. Don't try anything like that again. Pain is... Pain is scary, right? I'm alright. No more running away. I'm Lafayette. It's good to finally meet you properly, Eleanor. Y yeah, likewise. Don't worry. If you try running, you won't get far. Once I've eaten your arms and legs, I merely need you alive to act as his vessel. Nothing more. That won't be necessary. I swore an oath before our duel. An oath grants power in exchange for a certain constraint. Mine was, if I lose, I will obey my opponent. Once put in motion, an oath cannot be broken by the one who swore it. I will keep my promise to you because I must. Hmm. An oath, is it? In that case, I have a question for you. What does the Abbey plan to do with the Nominat? To wipe out the demons, of course. We want to end the era of disaster once and for all. And how exactly does the Abbey plan on wiping out the demons? Is the Nominat going to wander the land, slaughtering them all? They... they never told me. And Nominat's ritual is kept confidential even within the Abbey. All I know is that it involves Melchior. Then it looks like the only way we'll figure out Inominat's true nature is by deciphering Lafayette's book. We'll have to track down Magilu's friend, the one who can read the ancient tongue. If we go to Isult in Southgand, we ought to find some clues to her whereabouts. But first, we have to figure out where we are now. We need to find a settler or a village. Something. <laughs> I'm surprised us chuckleheads even know our own names. Even the greatest scholars don't know everything at first. You can't get answers without asking for them. <laughs> Fair enough. Hard to argue with that. I've never seen a Moloch quite like him. Eleanor, your job is going to be to protect Lafayette, even if it brings you into conflict with other exorcists. Because if you turn on me... I know. Like I said, I can't betray you. Listen, Lafayette. If she makes any strange moves, I want you to stop her immediately, okay? I don't think Eleanor is such a bad person. Besides, she's oath-bound to her promise. She's lying, obviously. That's only something you do if your life depends on it. Yep. An oath is an art that takes complex rituals and lots of hard work and time. Hardly worth the trouble, to be honest. I told you already. She wants to take you away from us. Women are creatures of deceit, boy. If you say so. She's right. Of course that goes doubly so for Velvet the Vengeful Villainess. Looks go sucking. Well, I won't deny it. Hmm. What is it, Lafayette? I was told that women's looks can be deceiving, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to see. That's an age-old problem for men. You with me, Aizen? Aye. Women are fickle creatures at best. They lie as easily as they breathe, and men can never see through their deceptions. I totally feel you. Sounds like you've both been through hard times. The wounds women leave on a man's heart take longer to heal than a cut delivered by a sword. Uh, it's that bad? Beware a maiden's tears, boy. And guard yourself well. That's my advice to you. Beware tears and guard myself. Don't put any weird ideas into Lafayette's head, you two. They're just facts. If you fill his head with any more garbage, I'm eating both of you. Yes, ma'am. Yikes. The swordsman and the pirate having troubles with women? <laughs> well, women are nothing if not difficult. I have the deepest sympathy for you both. What do you think of the ladies' reactions? Well, Velvet won't eat either of you, and Mogilu didn't seem sympathetic at all. See? Appearances can be deceiving. And it seems you've absorbed the lesson well. Right. I'm not like that, though. Huh? Yes, some women use their tears to manipulate others. But not all do. And I, for one, despise such duplicity. The women who did that to Aizen and Rokuro are just the extreme. Yeah. I can see how much you hate this honesty, Eleanor. Huh? Um, yeah, that's right. Be a good example for the boy, then, so he doesn't end up like Rokuro and me. I 
intend to do just that, whether or not you ask it of me. Eleanor is a lot stronger than she appears. Oh my god. They go out of their way. And... Hey, why... Okay, let's see what you have. And I guess we have the full team. And you know that is it. Now, let's see what we can play with. Uh, I think about this game that you cannot replay the cutscene, but in the same time I want to have them look kinda goofy. A little. Okay, well to go. Don't touch it. You'll hurt yourself. In other words, the rest of her is fair game. Not unless you really want to get hurt. Oh my god, this too. Okay, let's look at the... Uh, I guess we go in that direction and... It's... It's just a rock. Take it if you want. I think it's really rare. The way it sparkles... I think it might even be bright steel. Bright steel? Never heard of it. Yeah, it's actually a rare metal used to forge weapons and stuff. You don't find it just anywhere. If there's bright steel here, that means we must be in either Endgand or Islegand. Both are a long ways off from Midgand. I doubt the Abbey has many people stationed out here. That's our pirate! Arr! Here there be treasures shiny and sentries few! At the very least, this could mean we'll be left alone for a while. Nice find, Luffy said. Thanks! Now wash your hands. Okay. <sighs> the only way to learn where we are is to find someone to ask, I guess. Hmm. What's eating you, Luffy said. If people say you can't judge women at face value, does that mean you can with men? Sure. Men are simple creatures. Men are simple. Oh! You talk like you're an expert in all things masculine. But you can only speak for your own family. As if you're one to judge. And I'm sure you've charmed a magnificent lord to be your lover. Sure. What does he look like? Is he tall? None of your business. Don't tell me. He was always on the other side of a swinging door, so you only saw his feet. <gasps> I see. What a lovely crush that must be. I read that story. It was a book called The Legs of a Man. Oh? I've never heard of it. I've read it too. It's a sad, bittersweet tale. But I enjoyed it quite a lot. 
I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Maybe when I have some free time after killing Artorias. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know if men could be judged at face value. No. No, no, no. Did I... Do you see what Gimli... What now? Oh, okay. That had to be. It's not often you find bright steel above ground. I hear it's a lot of trouble to unearth, even in the regions it's normally found. Yeah. Mining for minerals takes a lot of specialized techniques and experience on the part of the prospector. They examine the soil, the water, the plants, and so on, where the same mineral was found before. Then search similar environments for the next big find. Sure, but it's not like they succeed every time. It's all a big gamble. Isn't there a simpler way? I read in a book once that you can use a pendulum to find water and metals underground. It's called dousing. What's dousing? You hang the pendulum so it's facing the ground. Then you chant the magic word, Magic Shazam, and wait to be amazed. The little bit of ore on its tip will sniff out buried treasure in underground lakes like a bloodhound on a prickle boar. You don't seriously believe this. Eh, it's just like fortune telling. You win some, you lose some. That's why they call it prospecting. So, if pendulums are used for fortune telling, why the hell is Zavid running around using them as weapons? He uses wind to control its trajectory. I think it's easier for him to manipulate pendulums in a fight than something like a whip or a rope. Oh, that makes sense now. That seems pretty clever. He's probably also doing it to make himself stronger, too. Malakim broadly fall into four elemental types. Earth, water, wind, and fire. Each strong or weak against the others. Wind beats Earth. Zavid is a wind Malak. So when he obtains Earth element minerals, his own strength is boosted. I never realized Malakim could be so calculating. Then if pendulums react to a Moloch's powers, maybe they can actually do this dousing stuff like Magilu says. Yeah, it's worth taking that thing seriously. Zavid might like to joke around, but when it comes to fighting, he knows full well just what he's doing. He puts an awful lot of thought into that weapon of his, if you ask me. You don't? I spare all my thoughts for my sweetheart. Yeah, right. You just like to cause trouble without putting much thought into anything. Well, this was something. Let me just check something. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Tales of Blazer. And last time we got a new crewmate. Eleanor. And I could not. Oh, now I notice that the two of them kind of have like green eyes. I know. Love is it? I don't know. Velvet is kind of missing that they are golden or brown gold. But, I know. Huh. So today is the gold out with the love is it. So I guess we're just trying to go to a town now. Time to dish out spankings. <laughs> You there. Got a moment? Ah! Are you guys with the sword breaker? The what? The what? Get, get away from me! I'm sorry, all right? Real class act. Attacking is your apologize. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
My sword! Please, mighty demon, I beg you! I'll do anything, just spare me! I only wanted to ask you something. You don't have to worry. This woman here is an exorcist. Huh? R right. I'm Eleanor, a praetor exorcist. Please, remain calm and hear our questions. You do look like an exorcist, but what are you doing with ruffians like these? Top secret Abbey business. That's all I can say. Now, can you tell us where we are? And are there any ports nearby? You don't know? You're on Cadnix Island in Islegand. The port is at the other end of that ravine. Thank you. I'll send a Sylph Jade to the Von Altia. Thanks. One more question. Who's this sword breaker? Ah, he's a demon. Causes lots of trouble around these parts. He only attacks sword fighters, and he breaks their blades. He's even taken down a number of Praetors. Hence the name Swordbreaker. He wields a fine sword, clearly forged in a foreign land. I tried to find his lair to steal the weapon for myself. But that's when I was attacked. A foreign sword? I'd be careful if I were you. If he spots that sword on your back... <laughs> You'll be in a world of trouble. Sounds like a real nasty fellow. Well, he tries to pull anything on this demon, and he's in for one munchy, crunchy surprise. <laughs> you folks are all crazy. Yep. Either way, I'd say this is a blessing in disguise for you. You're lucky to still be alive. Take this chance to abandon your life of crime. Let's find that port and meet up with our ship. Okay, the first skip. Oh, look at him. Can you read any of this old writing? No. I've studied many languages, but I've never seen script like this before. Can you read it, Eleanor? I've never come across this language either. Where did you find a rare tome like this? Um, well... It was a lucky find at the capital. What can I say? The kid loves to read. I was surprised to see how many Malakim like to read. Genfu does a lot of reading too. I didn't know that. It's true. I'm not sure what he's been reading though. Did someone call for me? Bienfu, do you like to read too? Oh yes, books are a treasure trove of knowledge. But I'm a greater Malakim, so the literature I enjoy might be a bit above your level, Lapiset. How to talk a human female into becoming your vessel. And physically escalating with cuties. Huh? <laughs> Bien? When did he come from? Physically escalating. What does that mean? You, you don't really need don't know. need to know. Uh, all right. Here. Now there are two of I'm them. I'm confiscating all of these. And I have some questions. Bianfu, you better be ready for a thorough interrogation. Bien! <laughs> you look like you're having fun, Rokuro. Well, I'm a Yaksha. A Yaksha? A spirit of war. Oh, Yaksha. Yeah, a demon that lives for combat. But this swordbreaker has cut down exorcists with its foreign blade. Aren't you scared? Of dying, you mean? Yeah. I'm not afraid of dying. It's more that I'm afraid of not being alive. Huh? Fighting is my life. It's all I want to do. So I fight. That's what living means to me. Ah. <sighs> living only to kill. A demon is always going to be a demon. Well, if you're going to be blunt. <laughs> oh, yeah, we in the right way. Hmm? What's wrong? 
Uh oh. An enemy. That sword. Is that Storm Quell? A demon wielding a foreign made sword. You must be the sword breaker. <laughs> Not much for conversation, are you? Silence, they say, is only commendable in an upstone drive and a maid not bendable. <laughs> Moving. I'll take this one. Come and get me. Good a challenge. Doing? Touch me and I'll kill you. Uh, sorry. I just got a little riled up. Do you know that demon? No, but I know his sword. A blade called Stormquell. Stormquell? Whatever. Doesn't have anything to do with us. Let's just get to the portal already. Is everyone up? Oh boy. <laughs> 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 